So don't make the mistake of giving big titles because it feels good because it confuses people what their actual skill set is. And it also confuses people when you meet them and they go, oh my gosh, you got a CEO, a CMO, a COO and a, a C this and a C that. How big's your business? Oh, I got nine employees. And people are like, okay. There you go. Just, I told Brandon I was going to do that for our group. So we are. Nice job. You have more than I do. So we'll be picking up more, more people. My question is, if I have a COO that doesn't seem to be growing or doesn't seem to be moving everyone, got him on Cardo University, got all that stuff, and he still doesn't seem to be putting out, when do you decide that you need to cut it and move on? Yeah, how big is your business? We're small, we have nine employees. So here's the first thing. I just wanna tell everybody listening to this because I think it's important to understand when you guys give titles like COO, when you're a business that's a small business, it's not believable to the marketplace and it's not believable to the employee. And the reason I bring that up is because this is what happens. Like you have somebody in there that's running a business of 10 people. A C title should be someone running a business greater than 50 to $100 million. A director title would be somebody that would be running a business with five or six or seven or eight people. So we give titles to people and then they elevate their belief about their importance and significance when they haven't yet actually done anything. What you should do is say, I'm going to give you a director title. And when we get to 200 employees, I'm going to give you a vice president title. And when we get to 400 employees, I'm going to give you a C-suite title. So don't make the mistake of giving big titles because it feels good because it confuses people what their actual skill set is. And it also confuses people when you meet them and they go, oh my gosh, you got a CEO, a CMO, a COO and a, a C this and a C that. How big's your business? Oh, I got nine employees. And people are like, okay. So it immediately undercuts your credibility with people that actually know. I'm just saying this to you sure. because everyone makes this mistake. And now you're in a situation where you have somebody who's probably getting paid at what would be a, a senior manager or director level in a corporation, and they're not going along with the entrepreneur or the founder, the owner. And so the reason business owners start their business is they have an intuition about creating an opportunity. They risk everything to go chase that intuition, and then they hire people around them, and then they start pulling. What should I do? How should I do it? Where do you think we should do it at? And there's no way if they've never done it, you know what you're doing. So you create this dynamic where the owner is taking off the foot off the accelerator. And I, I reminded this to our team today on some things. When you start managing people, you're losing momentum in the business. You need to be inspiring people. You need to be developing people. You need to be stretching people's rubber bands. But when anybody in your business says, I'm gonna manage them and they start micromanaging them, they're actually the reason the business is gonna suffer. If you're actually micromanaging and managing people tight, you're the reason the business is gonna suffer. Every single person needs to be in development mode, not in management mode. You always okay? say build. We need builders. Builders. Not managers. Yeah, we need builders, not managers. It's easy to sit around and poke people and say, why'd you do this and why'd you do that? But if you don't have a, a corresponding response to, hey, let me show you how to do it so we can do it right, then you shouldn't be poking at them because you don't even know how to do it. What you have is you have somebody who is now way outside their comfort zone because training and role playing makes them not allowed to be invisible. I can tell you I'm working hard and I'm busy and I'm doing you all sorts of favors and I'm giving everything I have to this company, but don't make me actually show you my lack of skill set because it exposes what the problems are with the business. So instead, I would rather reject the idea rebuke the idea that actually show you, I don't know what the hell I'm doing either. And that's why people hide the ball and they go and they don't want to do things, especially training, because if I'm running a team of salespeople or people that are representing the brand, we should all be saying the same thing. We should all be overcoming the same objections. We should all understand what no means. What does no mean to everybody on here? People ask me, how did I go and take all the rejection that I got when I was out raising money and doing things, being told no, 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 no. But what does no mean to people on here? Put in the chat what no means to you. Try harder, no means get back at it. Try not again. Yet, not, not right yet. now, maybe. Yeah, see, here's the problem, man. I'm gonna point this out to you because this is the problem that your manager doesn't understand. So I'm gonna read you the definition of no. 
to have information of some kind in your mind, to understand something, to have a clear and complete idea, to have learned a skill or language. See, you're all using the wrong no. When people used to tell me no, I didn't hear N-O, I heard they don't K-N-O-W. Oh. So oh. when you guys hear no, I hear I don't know, and I happen to be the guy with the information right? Because I do know. The reason this is important is when your key person's telling you no, it's because they don't know. And that makes them insecure. So they'd rather fight you than embrace it and say, absolutely, dude, I will take the bull by the horn. I'll incorporate this. I'll train with the team. We're all going to look stupid at first. Who cares? That's my job to tighten up the team and get us rock and rolling. That mindset though, when you don't have that in an organization because people are protecting is what ruins an organization. Yeah, hiding the ball. It's, it's like the secret, right? It's like, I've got a secret. I don't want somebody to know I'm not as good as I am. I don't want somebody to think I'm not able to do it. And so I'd rather hide something than say, hey, you know what? This is a great idea because obviously we're trapped at nine people. We don't have 90, right. so I don't know what I'm doing. So it started though with you giving too big of a title to someone who doesn't know what they're doing and now they're protecting. Everybody listen to this, it's gonna happen every single time. And because law of the lid, remember we talked about John Maxwell's first law and 21 irrefutable law of the lid, it's cap. There's actually three lids in business, okay? But you'd There's, have to come to a 10X 360 in order to know. You'd that. have to come to a 10X 360, but when you learn how those three lids work together, it answers your question. Here's what you gotta do. The lid's been reached. You're up here and you've got someone underneath you. Now you have to exercise the hierarchical and leadership position that you have as the founder or the business owner. And you need to say, hey dude, I'm not asking you, man. Like we're gonna come together as a team and we're gonna grow this thing and we're gonna share together and you need to get on board. I'm not asking your permission to train my team. I'm telling you as an entrepreneur, as the founder, as the person that takes on the most risk, who's entrusting you to do the things I need you to do, not tell me what you need to do. Like, I guarantee you does not have the skill set to know what to do. So you say, we're all in line working together and you're trusting me and following my intuition or I will find somebody who will do that. So can we get on the same page? Because if we can't, we can figure this out right now. If we can, let's put our plan together and then I need you to be committed to the plan. Awesome.